film opens on a ranch where O.G. Haywood meets his father, Otis. Otis believes their horses will soon be featured in a show, sparing them from being sold. Unable to reach his sister and with a malfunctioning cell phone, O.G. and Otis are startled by a sudden screech from the sky, followed by a fast-moving object. As O.G. turns, he witnesses his father collapsing from his horse. Urgently, O.G. rushes Otis to the hospital, but he succumbs to a tragic accident, hit in the eye by a nickel. Returning to the ranch, O.G. discovers Otis Horse Coast, also injured by a mysterious assailant wielding a key. Months later, O.G. prepares Lucky, one of their horses, for filming. Director Finn Backman asked about Otis, a past collaborator, and a crew member discreetly reveals Otis's death, attributed to an object falling from a plane. Unfazed, Finn concentrates on directing with guidance from cinematographer Andler's Holst. Always struggles to communicate instructions to the crew due to his unfamiliarity with dealing with people. Fortunately, O.G.'s sister, M, arrives and takes charge. She proudly mentions that the first recorded motion picture featured a man riding a horse with their ancestor, Alistair Haywood, as the horse jockey, a fact often overlooked by history. M then moves on to safety instructions for handling Lucky before concluding her speech by showcasing her various skills. The crew decides to rehearse, but O.G. believes Lucky needs a break. Despite his concerns, the crew insists, leading to a mishap where a chrome ball is placed in front of Lucky, causing the horse to panic and kick the makeup artist. As a result, the Haywoods are fired. On their way home, the siblings visit a western theme park called Jupiter's Claim. While exploring, M notices a photo snapping wishing well. Due to financial difficulties, OG reluctantly sells Lucky, admitting to M that he has already sold 10 other horses but promises to buy them back. Before negotiating with the owner, OG asks M to stay back, expressing frustration that she promotes her side jobs instead of the family business. M argues that promoting the family business is her side job. Left with no choice, OG lets her meet the owner, G.U.P. Park, whom M recognizes as a former child actor. OG mentions the plan to buy back the horses, surprising Jupe. Instead, Jupe offers OG the same deal he presented to his father. During the conversation, M spots a picture from one of Jupe's old shows, Gordy's Home, which ended due to a chimpanzee actor's outburst during filming. Intrigued by M's enthusiasm, Jupe reveals a secret room where he keeps memorabilia from Gordy's home. As M contemplates the strange events, Jupe reminisces about the time he hid under the table as Gordy attacked his co-stars. Nevertheless, he dismisses the incident as something legendary. Returning home, OG informs M that Jupe is interested in purchasing the ranch. That night, the siblings raise a toast to their father's memory. M recalls that a horse named Jean Jacket was supposed to be the first one she would train, but their father sold it. Despite this, OG views their father as an industry changer and is unwilling to let go of the business. Suddenly, they discover ghost outside, prompting OG to investigate. He hears the radio playing in the house and asks M to lower the volume. Ghost unexpectedly runs away, prompting OG to use their buggy to track it down. He notices lights from Jupiter's claim, where Jupe is hosting a show. A mysterious shriek pierces the sky, and the power fluctuates at the Haywood's home. OG observes something zooming between the clouds, hurrying back home. Later, he confides in M that their father's death never made sense to him. That night, he heard Ghost aim at a sound he had never heard from a horse before. Concerned and asked what he saw, and OG describes something large, fast, and silent. Inspired by this revelation, M encourages her brother to create a website documenting UFO sightings. The next day, as they shop for equipment, M discusses potential profits from photo evidence and the opportunity to provide a platform for people to share their stories. At the checkout, the clerk, Angel Torres, notices the cameras they purchased and wonders if they were recently robbed. M explains their experiences with blackouts, and OG adds that even his cell phone lost power. Angel suggests that a cell phone's power doesn't just drop unless they're a UFO hotspot. He then delivers their equipment and assists in installing the cameras. During the process, Angel shares his theories about UFOs, suggesting they could be intergalactic travelers or planetary destroyers. M returns with a horse statue wrapped in bunting, arousing OG's suspicion about its origin. After setting up, Angel inquires about the siblings' activities, but they remain tight-lipped. That evening, OG hears noises from the bar, checks around, and turns off the lights. As he exits, the power returns, and he hears thumping sounds. Spotting a strange creature behind him, he attempts to capture a photo with his phone. More creatures emerge, causing OG to retreat. In a spontaneous reaction, he punches one, only to realize they are boys in costumes. They warn OG not to interfere with Jupiter's claim and leave. When M arrives, OG reveals they are Jupe's sons who allowed their horse, Clover, to escape. Despite M's anger, OG points out that she stole their horse statue. OG searches for Clover outside while M reviews the camera footage. 
Startled by a large figure on screen, she discovers it's a praying mantis clinging to the lens. Angel warns her about a downed camera through a remote feed. Outside, OG finds Clover, but the horse hesitates and then bolts away, coinciding with a brief tornado around the horse statue, causing it to vanish. At the store, Angel checks the Haywood's camera feed and asks M to remove the mantis. However, the remaining horses in the barn become agitated, and suspicious looks at the sky and notices an immobile cloud. She urgently alerts her brother OG that something is in the clouds, instructing him to run. OG sprints away just as something moves from the peculiar cloud. He reaches the shed and witnesses the UFO disappearing into the clouds. Back at the house, lights flicker and M's phone disconnects from Angel. Concerned, he adjusts the camera, signaling to M that it's still operational. Climbing onto the roof, M throws candies at the praying mantis, obstructing the camera's view. In the midst of the chaos, OG watches as Clover gallops away, with the UFO ominously hovering above them. He trails the pursuit, observing the UFO chasing Clover. Suddenly, a gust of wind obscures his vision and Clover vanishes. The siblings later reunite in the house. While M is eager to leave, OG is determined to analyze the footage. He assures her that the UFO won't return tonight, but M is skeptical about taking such a risk. OG insists she should go alone, since he needs to tend to the horses, but M can't bring herself to leave her brother. The next day, M contacts Antlers to propose a documentary project, promising to capture an elusive shot. Antlers warns her that chasing her dream might be a perilous journey. Before ending the call, Angel pays a visit and M points out the illegality of checking their camera feed without permission. Despite this, she presents evidence of a cloud that remains stationary day and night. Oja reflects on whether he has been observing the same cloud for the last six months. Recollecting the UFO's unusual movement, they ponder its nature. In 1998, during the filming of Gordy's home in front of an audience, the cast celebrated the chimp's birthday. However, when a balloon popped, Gordy turned aggressive, causing the audience to flee. A young Jew witnessed the chaos hiding under the table as the chimp attacked his on-screen mother, Mary Jo. Meanwhile, his on-screen father, Tom, tried to escape, but the chimp pursued him off the stage. Jupe remained frozen in fear, noticing Mary Jo's oddly upright sandal. Eventually, Gordy returned and sat beside Mary Jo's lifeless body. When the chimp finally noticed Jupe under the table, it approached and offered a fist bump, only to be sh** in the head in front of Jupe. The adult Jupe now stares blankly in his office, haunted by the memories. Revisiting the traumatic memories, Jupe is comforted by his wife, Amber, who helps him regain composure and repairs for their show. In the meantime, OG discovers a flyer from Jupiter's claim and assumes that Lucky will be featured in their new show. Determined, he heads to Jupiter's claim to retrieve Lucky. Jupe hosts the show, dedicating it to Mary Jo, who sits in the audience wearing a veil. He informs the crowd that his family has witnessed a spectacle for the past six months, promising to reveal it that day. Jupe recounts the night the flying saucer took his horse trigger and presents Lucky in a cage, assuring the audience they will witness the spectacle in an hour. His sons perform in their costumes as something wars above them, carrying a line of bunting. The audience notices the stationary cloud, and Jupe instructs them to stay in their seats. As they open Lucky's cage, the power shuts off and the wind intensifies, partially revealing Mary Jo's disfigured face from Gordy's attack. Jupe stares at the sky as the creature lifts people from the audience into its depths, causing cries of fear and pain. When OJ arrives at the theme park, he finds it deserted except for Lucky. Spotting the UFO, he tries to signal Lucky while hiding under the entrance. However, a UFO detects him and attempts to pull them in. By night, OJ awakens still in the park with Lucky. Loading Lucky into the truck, he calls his sister to warn her that the UFO is an entity consuming everyone in the park. Meanwhile, Angel drives home when his van's engine dies. Hearing something in the distance, he realizes the alien is approaching. The power shuts off in the Haywood house. Angel returns, alerting M to their impending danger before he hides under a table. Frozen in fear, M hears screams above their home. The creature roars, and the screams abruptly cease. The alien expels inorganic materials it consumed, showering the house in a rain of blood. Outside, OG's truck halts within the creature's range. Motionless, he awaits the storm, which suddenly falls silent. Looking up, OG confirms the alien is above him, shielding him from the rain. He quietly waits, evading the alien's detection until the horse statue M stole slams into his windshield. By morning, the power is restored, waking up OJ. He slowly drives to the house and seeing him, M urges Angel to leave with him. However, Angel believes staying in the house is safer. Outside, OJ stealthily approaches Angel's van, opening the door. Angel and M rush out of the house, but the radio abruptly stops as the alien descends. 
Nevertheless, the trio manages to drive away. The next evening, news reports about the disappearances at Jupiter's claim catch Antler's attention. After dinner, OG tries to persuade the two to continue their work with the alien, but Am and Angel are too frightened. However, M receives a call at the ranch, changing their minds. The next day, Antler joins the trio, fascinated by the stationary cloud. He expresses a desire to see the creature, and OG reveals that it appears when hungry. Remarking that the creature in Jean Jacket didn't like the horse statue, OG clarifies that Jupe angered it by trying to exploit it for profit. To train such a creature, OG suggests entering into an agreement with it. Antlers proposes sending horses to lure Jean Jacket out, but OG volunteers to do it himself. Over the next few days, Antlers plans how to film Jean Jacket, opting for a wind-up video camera to avoid electronic interference. Meanwhile, Angel acquires equipment from the store and M stitches something up while taking sky dances from Jupiter's claim. One night, Angel questions the worthiness of their actions but convinces himself that it's important for fame, money, and potential heroism. Despite their excitement, fear casts a shadow over the team. The following day, the team gets to work. Antlers and Angel hide under a camouflage net with their cameras and M activates his set of sky dancers across the ranch. OG rides Lucky. But he notices one Sky Dancer already down. M checks the surveillance cameras, finding it reactivating, attributing it to a faulty battery. Suddenly, a motorcycle rider arrives, prompting M to try to make him leave. Realizing he's a paparazzi seeking answers about the disappearances, M attempts to send him away, but the rider speeds across the ranch. Rushing to the monitors, M sees the Sky Dancers deactivating, signaling Jean Jacket's approach. The rider's electronic motorcycle malfunctions, tossing him onto the road, screaming in pain. Oji rushes to help, but his radio cuts off communication. Checking on the rider, Oji finds him focused on retrieving his camera to film the accident. Fortunately, the Sky Dancers power on again, indicating that Jean Jacket has moved away. Oji hurries to carry the man on his horse, but the rider insists on capturing his accident first. Suddenly, all the Sky Dancers and cameras power off. Oji sees the creature's reflection in the rider's helmet, apologizes, and hurries away on horseback. Jane Jacket swiftly descends, sucking up the rider just steps away from OG, who hears the rider's screams. Growing close, OG sees Jean Jacket approaching but remains still, avoiding eye contact as the creature sucks up the Sky Dancers. Once Jen Jacket is far enough, OG rides away, and the alien hides behind the mountains. Suddenly, Jane Jacket reappears in front of OG, so he turns and rides away. Releasing a parachute, the alien sucks it up, allowing OG to hide in a shed. The alien passes by and zooms back into the sky and the team celebrates their successful plan. However, Antlers leads for the mountains, wanting a clearer shot of the alien. Jean Jacket goes straight for him, sucking him in while he continues filming. The alien then targets Angel, but a tarp blows over him, diverting the creature. Jean Jacket heads for the bar, tearing the roof apart. M is sent flying but lands safely beside the house as Jean Jacket leaves. Angel tries to run but gets caught in barbed wire. Looping more barbed wire around him, he prevents being sucked in but stumbles back out. M limps away as Jean Jacket changes form, lingering beside the shed where OG is hiding. OG tells his sister to take the rider's bike and leave. Despite feeling guilty, M makes her way to the bike. Jean Jacket spreads out, heading towards her, causing the motorcycle to power down. Seeing this, OG rides Lucky again to distract the alien. Jean Jacket turns to OG, but the motorcycle still won't power on. Hopeless, M tells her brother to escape, but OG refuses. As he slowly backs away, Jean Jacket reveals his square mouth with tassel-like skin. Finally, at a safe distance, the motorcycle powers on. M screams, redirecting Jean Jacket's attention to her as she rides away. She reaches Jupiter's claim, releasing a blow-up mascot to bait the alien. M gathers discarded coins, placing them in the wishing well. Jean Jacket follows the mascot into the sky as M captures photos using the well. Once the alien captures the balloon, M takes one more clear photo before it flies away inside its body. The balloon pops, finally killing Jean Jacket. Exhausted, M collapses just as the press arrives. Instead of approaching them, M walks away, seeing her brother outside, alive and well, and the movie ends here. If you enjoyed this video, check out another video popping up on your screen now.